in this video, we're going to be analysing Arsenal's first goal in a 3-0 win against Newcastle United in the Premier League on Monday the 18th of January. More specifically, we're going to have a look at Carl Darlow and areas that we believe he could have potentially prevented this goal from happening. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the goal and then what we'll do is we'll break it down in the smaller segments it's four in, four against Newcastle in a hope of helping Kevin's. people it's understand what's happened. So whilst we appreciate not every shot is saveable, we believe in this instance that Carl Darlow could have potentially done better. So what we'll do is we'll break this down and on the flip side, if we feel a goalkeeper has done well, would like to also break things down and analyse what they've done well and also educate people on how they can implement those certain aspects into their game. So the first part of this, what we're going to look at is Aubameyang's just outside the area as he drives in. What we'll notice is there's two players putting pressure on the ball. So you've got Emil Kraft going first, John Joe Shelby's going to start to look to cover him behind what this is doing is it's forcing Aubameyang away from goal, but at this point, Carl Darlow steps up and takes a step out towards the ball. So we're going to have a look at support and start positions. So the first thing you should look to do is take up a good position to defend the space and behind your defenders. So you will do that when the ball is in the opposition half and your defensive line is very high. So where this goal came from, it's come initially from a Newcastle corner. They've given position, possession away very high up the field and Arsenal have counter-attacked. So at this point, Carl Darlow should be looking, or any other goalkeeper should be looking to be 18-yard box or beyond. As play progresses, your defensive line drops, the ball gets further up the field, so we're looking at the middle third here. You should be looking to, again, defend the space and behind your defenders, but also defend your area. So at this point, you should be looking to be somewhere around his penalty spot. Depending on the height of his defensive line, he could be higher, or the depth of it, he, he could be deeper towards his goal. When the ball progresses into the defensive third, he should be prepared to defend the penalty area against crosses, against through balls, and also looking to defend the goal against any potential shots. Then as the ball enters a penalty area with defenders affecting the attacker, they should be looking to drop and defend the goal. So what this will do is this will maximise their reaction time and also give them enough time to see the shot if it is coming through bodies. If the ball enters a penalty area and the attacker is under no pressure from recovering defenders, that's when they look to go and engage the attacker as in turned into a 1v1 scenario, put pressure on the attacker, and it's where they should be looking to defend their area. And if the attacker, regardless of whether they're, they're under pressure or they've been engaged by an attacker, or whether they're, they're driving through, if they are wide of goal or travelling wide of goal, the, goal sh the goalkeeper should look to defend their goal. So what we'll do is we'll look at the next part now. So... As Aubameyang prepares to strike the ball, what you can see is Darlow's unbalanced. So his left foot's in front of his right, and he's still on the move as Aubameyang's pulled back to strike. So, in this instance, we'll move it on again. As he's pulled his foot back, Darlow's very high, he's unbalanced, and he's a lot closer at the ball than what he potentially could be. So. What we should be looking at there is either he stays in his original position or as he recognises a strike, the attacker's travelling away from goal and the defender's covering, he could potentially take half a step back. Ideal scenario is he stays where he is, he remains balanced so he's not on the move as the attacker's striking the ball. So we're going to have a look at the goalkeeper's set position and preparation. So... First thing you do is, as the ball's moving, find your line. So your line goes from the ball through the middle of the body to the middle of the goal. 
as I mentioned previously, can you manage your distance between yourself and the ball? So you should be looking to give yourself maximal reaction time whilst also being able to defend the goal. Needs to be able to see the ball and keep his eyes on the ball. Also looking for triggers. So is the attacker preparing to strike? What would you see there? Are they looking to pass the ball? Or are they shifting the ball to create an angle to strike? So on all three occasions, if they're preparing to strike, can we be ready? And what would we see from the attacker if they were preparing to strike in terms of body position, body shape? Similarly with the pass, what would you be looking at? And finally with moving the ball, so it's a slight adjustment. As you see them pull the trigger to strike the ball, that's when you're looking to set. So on the attacker actually pulling the strike, you would be looking to be prepared to be ready. So in terms of being ready, you want your feet set. So I normally work off what's comfortable for the goalkeeper. So it's a round shoulder width apart. Some taller goalkeepers might like to be a little bit wider. Some shorter goalkeepers might like to be a little bit narrower. But either way, you're looking at equal body weight on each foot or on the front of each foot. You need to be balanced with the ability to move quickly so we're not planted with feet, we're not heavy on my feet. Your hands and your head forward and your hips back to maintain your balance. And what we'll see here is just before Aubameyang strikes the ball, all of Cardalo's weight is on his left foot, his right foot's off the floor, which offsets his weight towards his left side, which hinders his ability to be able to react to the shot. Instead, what you'll see is he it almost looks as if he's anticipating the ball going across his body and he starts to fall early before. Aubameyang's made contact, which we will see here. So, in terms of shot stopping, things that we need to be looking at is we need to be prepared to make the save. So, are we balanced? Are our feet set? Are we in the correct position in relation to the ball? And have we maximised our reaction time? Have we responded to the trigger? So, what you want to be thinking here is you've already seen the attackers preparing to strike the foot's come back, head's gone over the ball, body's gone over the ball. Now we're looking at the attacker actually making contact with the ball. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to assess the shot. So we're going to have a look at the direction, the height, the pace and the flight. We're going to decide which technique we're going to use to make the save. Then you're going to prepare your body or get your body ready to make the save and which type of movements will help you achieve this. So all of this will happen in a split second. We see it. We've already made that decision. A lot of it will come down to muscle memory. We're prepared. So what you're looking at, if you need to step into things, you're moving your closest foot first, and you're moving from bottom to top. Same as if you're diving. If you need to step, in your dive, you'll move your leg first. Last thing you want to do is move your head too early. You move your head too early, you start to put too much weight on that lead leg, which makes it very hard for you to move. So try and keep your head central at all times. So as you're preparing as well, you're preparing your hands. So bottom to top, leg goes, or feet go if you can shuffle. As you're moving, your hands are already starting to prepare to make the save. And then you're executing executing it so you're completing all movements in coordination as i say from bottom to top to make the save and over the last yard or so you you essentially just watching the ball in your hands or in your body and lastly and i think this is the one that that we should look at the most the goalkeeper needs to back themselves you need to trust in your ability to make that save we all know that carl dollar is an exceptional shot stopper and had he followed the, the steps above, I fully believe he keeps that ball out the back of the net. So let's just finally see this in action. Sensational goal from Pierre-Emerick Abemiang. It's four in four against Newcastle for the Gabonese. You'll see there, right foot comes off the floor. He's already on his way down as the ball reaches him. And he's, he's thrown a... 
a hopeful right hand at it, hoping they, hoping they'll keep the ball out the back of the net. So, in conclusion, I think that initially Dolo can benefit from staying deep. So he needs to recognise that Aubameyang's been forced wide. As he's been forced wide and he's under pressure from the defender, he doesn't need to go out. So he would have benefited from setting his feet, maximising his reaction time. And in that instance, uh, he is more better prepared to make that save. Again, I believe he should have backed his ability. So as I mentioned previously, he's an exceptional shot stopper. He's doing really well since he stepped in for Dubravka. Um, if he stands up, if he backs his ability to make that save, there's absolutely no doubt that he keeps it out. I believe, as he has anticipated, so he's already starting to fall to his left. He significantly reduced his chances of making a save. So the only way he really makes a save is if the ball goes while he's diving. We should really be looking to flip that around. He should be moving towards the flight of the ball. But ultimately, by not being balanced and not being prepared and by anticipating what should have been a routine save has resulted in a goal. So, I hope you've enjoyed that, that breakdown of Aubameyang's goal against Newcastle United. If you found it useful, please comment, give the video a like, subscribe to our channel. Really do hope you're enjoying this content and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you.